Hey y'all, it's James here with the Board Game Spotlight and Druid City Games, and today we are talking about Flatline from Renegade Games. It's for one to five players, ages 13 plus, and this time's about 45 minutes. I find that to be about right. And so here is the follow-up from Kane Klinko of uh, Fuse, and man, this is real-time dice rolling done very different than um, with some twists that uh, I would say I really enjoy. And typically, I'll just go ahead and be honest, I don't like real-time uh, strategy games. It's not, I get frantic, I, I lock up, I don't do well. This is very interesting the way they execute everything. So let's dive in and I'll show you. So we are on a space station that has dying patients, as the art here shows, as they're like dragging the guy in with the wound and uh, you know the doc's working on somebody here in the capsule. And so we've all got our dice and we're gonna be rolling these and matching these symbols for the patients. And so let's dive into this and we'll take a look. So real simple, you're gonna be matching your dice based off of these rows. And if you can complete the row, then at the end of the round, you can lock that out. And so even if you can't complete everything on a single patient, you can get some of the patient working toward the goal, okay? And so what these mean are, so like you've got this, which is just one person can work on it. And in this situation, the same person can't do both of those. Uh, this means everybody must work together to do it in any sort of combination. Um, this one means that exactly two people have to work together to complete this one. And then I don't have one out, but it is like this. It'll be red and it shows that everybody must do it. So as you're playing, um, the typical round goes like this. So we, here's our round counter. And we will be, you have a, approximately eight rounds. And there's a couple ways to add a couple of power cubes to that, to the power track. Uh, that also tells you, uh, you can see how many um, cards, emergency cards are gonna have to be put out in that round. And I'll explain that in a second. And so you'll do that, then we'll add those emergency cards, then we'll roll the emergency dice, and then we'll chat. And then we have exactly one minute. So somebody will have a timer on their phone, they'll go, all right, three, two, one, go. And then everybody looks at what they got and they're like, okay, okay, okay. Because beforehand, before you roll that minute out, the chief medical officer, so these are the three things I just said, the chatting part, we're gonna look at the situation here on all the patients and see what we, which one we wanna do our best to try to get. Um, the life support system is also gonna be pointing at some particular squares on each patient. And if you uh, cure that patient during that, at the end of that round, you'll either get that benefit or you'll get that, that emergency that it comes up with. So typically you wanna take a look at that and then see if there's anybody you're close to. You've got a whole stack of patients. Now you can control the difficulty uh, by how many patients that you're trying to um, you know, take care of. Uh, big problem there is this is really hard. Uh, we've only won, I've played it five or six times and only won once and we've never played it on hard. So um, it's a lot of fun if you like these type of games. It, like I said, it plays up to five. So if you've got five people out there, there's a lot of chaos going on, but it's a lot of controlled chaos and it's only for a minute. And then you get to kind of uh, debrief and go over everything that happened and see where you're at and see the situation because these emergency, I'll show you these emergency cards here in a second. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. So uh, let's go over each thing. So each round, this will show you like, all right, so at the beginning of the round, we're gonna take this power cube off, it's gone, and we have to put out five cards. Well, here's our cards, here's our stack of cards. So they're either gonna be blue or orange. Blue means they're just gonna come over here into the emergency dice row. And you got a one through six, and they can be double stacked. And so this one we have to have five, five cards. So here's an orange card, it's gonna come over here into the uh, emergency row here. So there's another blue, there's another orange, and so we had to have five. And so, okay, so we got really unlucky. We had three orange emergencies. So these are critical. You, if you don't solve these during the round, they move over here to the red, like you're gonna die row. Bad things happen. And as you can see right here, if you're playing one to two player, you can have four of them. If you're playing between three and five, you can only have three. If that ever happens, you lose. So. Part of your conversation is going to be, we have to solve these. Like, this has to happen. Luckily, they just take up a lot of dice, the, these three. You need three of anything, four of anything, and everybody has to put one die here. So we're going to burn, if this was a potential round, we're going to burn a lot of dice in this round to get those. 
What's nice is at the end of the round, once they are finished, they come over here to the aid station. And so then they come here and then once during a round, people can call out, like this one would let us remove one of the blue cards. Um, this one, all players can change to one, one die to any side, huge. Cause there'll be so many times, does everybody have a yellow? Does everybody have a yellow? And no one has a yellow or two people don't have a yellow. Uh, this one allows everybody to get an extra die. Uh, Cause we start with six and there's eight in there so you can bump up and get some extras. Now what, how this works is the beginning of the round, you're gonna roll the emergency die. And so as these rows fill up one to six, like I said, they can be doubled. So you can have another one. There could be two cards per row. You'll roll these, roll them, and oh, I wouldn't you know, that's how I roll dice, boys and girls. Had I rolled three, four, five, and six, nothing would have happened. But I rolled one and two. The only place we had cards. And so the, you, these take effect. Move a green card to the stats section. So that would actually take a good card and put it back. Luckily, we don't have any yet, so that doesn't matter. And this is everybody loses a die. Now, during a round, you can solve these and remove them by just like anything else, doing what they say. So this one, we, can, we get four dice there, we're good. So that's those. Uh, there are also two charging stations. If during a round we fill this all up, depending on player count, if there's three players, you just need these four. Four players here, five players, all of them. And we can get cubes to put back. So you'll strategically want to do that because right now we probably wouldn't want to do it because it's a, a, a round five. But when, say so that round three comes up, we probably want to do it there because then we would only have to put three cards back out. Uh, also, uh, this is the reroll station. So uh, in a five player game, you can only do it three times, four player, four times. In a one to three player, you can do it five times. If somebody, let's say like I roll all these dice and I'm just like stuck, I can't get anything going, but I've only put out one dice. I've still got five dice I haven't placed. Somebody else can sacrifice one of their dice and I can reroll all of my dice. So that takes a lot of strategy and a lot of teamwork, and a lot of communication because You've only got one minute, and that one minute flies by, flies by. That's why your planning beforehand is very, very important on how you're going to do things. Uh, at the end of a round, if you have cured all the rows of a patient, then you check and see if where your life support is at. If that happens, then okay, this patient was saved, and you everybody would get a, a plus die. Then this would rotate for the next round to the next slot on the first patient and you'll notice that these go to different spots on the other patients you want to pay attention to those because like in this one we would actually lose a uh, we would have to pick a completed row to unlock again so there are sometimes emergencies pop up you know that's pretty much the game i will say that one thing in the rules that you should you should definitely take a look at and explain really really well are the qualifications for each row because the first time people play, they get really confused when it gets into the uh, the one minute you're rolling. So you really want to explain the icons and who needs to do what. Because you don't want to have to waste time digging into answering people's questions. You just want to be able to react and put dice where they need to go. And it seems like the more than one player, the orange one there, uh, must work together to treat this line. It seems to confuse people. They get all different kind of sort of scenarios in their head of what they think needs to happen with that one. Hey, there needs to be three of us because there's three people. No, it means just all of us can work together um, as long as it's more than one. So any combination of more than one. Uh, there'll be some things come up that make you where you can't do things like this will come up here and say that you can't re-roll this round. I mean, there's some really, really gross stuff, especially if you try to ignore these completely and they end up getting double stacked all the way across six and then you end up having four conditions on every round. Oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> So much chaos, tons of laughing, and like uh, it's funny to see the different personality types that really stress out over the game, and ones that are just like cool and calm. And um, you will get a, a little bit of an alpha at the table usually, somebody leading the pack, but that's okay. In a game like this, you almost need somebody calling things out. Um, in fact, we've kind of rotated that before, and so it said, "Hey, all right, Jeff, you take a turn on calling out stuff this round." And just because if you don't, you've got everybody yelling and things are just going haywire. But uh, I would say for me, for Flatline, the thing that I enjoy the most is this uh, this one minute, but then it stops. So it's not real-time strategy the whole time. So we get to do some planning. We get to do some assessing, debriefing after, and then you crank up the one minute. And it takes uh, eight, eight to ten rounds to play the game. So, uh, you know, it 
it, it's a good time. If you enjoy this type of thing, this is a game that is going to be a home run for you. It's it's a beautiful game. Uh, the dice are awesome. I mean, they're really, really cool and high quality. And, you know, the box is heavy. You, you've got a really thick and awesome game. It's very difficult, which I think I really enjoy in a co-op. You know, it's... Um, you know, you're not going to beat it the first time you play it. You're probably going to do very bad. And uh, to me, that's a lot of fun when something, when it's co-op, is not easy. Uh, so that's it. Flatline from Renegade Game Studios. This one's going to be a home run from Kane Klinko. Uh, tons of fun. Grab it. Play it with your family. Uh, you can even simplify the rules a little bit. I've done that before where I don't even explain the wheel. And I, and I just say, hey, guys, and I don't, I don't pull out any of the blue cards. We just play with these and solve impatience. And you have a ton of fun and be up and playing in like three minutes. So you can simplify it down and house rule it and make it really, really simple to play with almost anybody. My son loves it, chunking the dice. He just throws stuff out there. I don't even try to direct him. But I usually try to go behind him and help him finish off stuff. So that's it. Uh, Flatline, Renegade Games. They're hitting more home runs. That's what they do. All right, guys. Next time. Bye.